I really want to start by saying uh, that I think it's more appropriate to talk about the coalition government two years in, is it delivering for civil society? Because this is a process. We all know you can't change policy on the ground too quickly. And um, I very much hope that we are making progress in a very difficult time. Um, I do most of my politics in West Yorkshire and I've seen voluntary organizations there over the years. And I was out uh, on two Fridays in the last month looking first at community foundations and second at community associations and various uh, local regeneration schemes in Airedale and Calderdale. And I have to say the test of how effective the big society agenda will have been in the long run is how far we can revive local community self get up and go activities in some of the toughest areas that I visit. I live in Salter, a village in which The Guardian is the largest selling newspaper and which has seven or eight very active local associations, um, including my local allotment society, the local history society, the village society, etc. It doesn't really need anything more. We all organize ourselves. But within five miles of Saltaire are several of those large, largely white council estates built in the 1960s and 1970s where unemployment is very high, very often second generation, where children are still going into reception classes in school with speaking difficulties, and where the, the sense of dependence on state agencies and hostility to state agencies low election turnout, all sorts of things, is, is high there. Those are the areas which we see as the biggest challenge for the big society agenda. I met some of the community organizers which are, who are now in training to help to encourage people not just to sit there and complain, but to get up and work together and begin to organize and join in with the voluntary organizations that are there, the community associations that are there. Um, and that's very much one of our major focuses, because we do recognize that government cannot do everything, and that the extent to which a substantial chunk of our population had become dependent on the state, dependent on various agencies, willing to complain about those agencies, but not to recognize that they also had to share in the responsibility is very much part of our social problem. We're also well aware that the popular willingness to pay for the services that people want and need is limited. Um, we have in Britain uh, a population that wants high quality public services but wants low taxes and is resistant to higher taxes. My party is the only party which has had a manifesto in the last four elections which actually had a call for higher taxation, the penny on education in 1997 and 2001, and some of my friends in the Labour Party said to me at the time, you know, nobody is ever going to vote for higher taxes. Well, that did lead us into a situation in which from 2001 on, public expenditure was rising, but taxes were not rising as fast, so that we went into deficit even when we were running um, a, a good rate of growth between 2001 and 2008. And I well rem remember Polly Toynbee in 2010 saying, as we were grappling with the question of how much you raised and how much you spent, unless we go on spending 2 to 3 percent above the rate of growth on the NHS for the foreseeable future, the NHS cannot survive. Well, if we're, we're talking about a projection of public expenditure well above a rate of, of growth, then we recognize that we have a problem. So I hope we have and can build a cross-party approach to reviving and strengthening civil society, to encouraging people to feel less dependent on the state, and to work together with those organizations that engage people, and many of them are not easy to engage, let's all, we all know that, I'm sure, uh, to work together 
uh, to provide the services that our society so desperately needs. Well, the government has, as you all know, put in a, a number of uh, new uh, initiatives, some, many of them building on what the previous government uh, had already been engaged in. We've started a national citizen service on a small scale last year, some 8,000 young people uh, took part. Uh, this summer, and I hope to go and, and visit some of them, uh, some 30,000 will take part and we hope to build it up to 90,000 again in partnership with local schools, local bodies and others um, uh, next year. Very much to give late teenagers a chance to work in the community, a sense that they're working with people from different backgrounds uh, and certainly the feedback we had from the, the short uh, experiments last summer has been extremely positive. I've already mentioned the community organizers training scheme in which we're training a number of people who will be full-time, paid modestly, um, and the ones I have met are extremely impressive, um, to go out and help to generate self-government, uh, as it were, uh, local cooperation uh, in some of these large uh, estates uh, in particular where so little is done collectively. And that uh, will be uh, continuing and we hope uh, will, will help to generate much more in the sense of local community self-management. The Community First programme launched, um, has launched with some 30 million pounds in neighbourhood match funds uh, to help uh, raise uh, money for social action again in deprived areas and there's a new 21 million pound social action fund to expand at speed the proven models of social action which we find. We are working to uh, encourage innovation in giving across the board. I'm impressed by the community foundations that I've visited. Um, some have been luckier than others. The Leeds Community Foundation in a sense has been extremely lucky in receiving some very large endowments. The Calderdale Community Foundation, which I visited, has had to work very hard to, to find um, legacies which have been left to charities no longer used, to persuade people to give moderate donations, but we're all working on it. And that, again, will provide a basis on which there is money available locally for local initiatives. Fine. Big Society Capital has been launched with up to £600 million to build the social investment market. And that's, uh, as you know, very new, but that will be a wholesale banker for social investment. And we're developing work on social impact bonds through the Cabinet Office, supporting at the present moment four local authorities to develop payments by results. Um, there's a £10 million investment and contract readiness fund which is helping charities and social enterprises to win more capital investment. And um, the work which Lord Hodgson is doing for us on cutting red tape for the voluntary organisation, for the voluntary organisation sector, is something which he will talk about with much more expertise than I have. He's due to give a report uh, on... Uh, freeing up good neighbours, unshackling good neighbours, uh, again in a few days' time. And he will shortly, in the summer, be giving a report to the government reviewing the Charities Act after five years. So we are working on a large agenda. It is not complete. These things do take time, but we look forward very much to continuing to work with you. We expect active criticism from you as we go ahead. We wish we were a government working in a period when it was easier to give out more money, but we know that we are not. Um, and we do hope that by 2015, we will have a, a more active partnership, more local than national. The localism agenda is very much part of all of this. Uh, which will have uh, helped to bring more people in, not just to charitable giving, but also to local enterprise and local activity. Thank you. Thank you.